message tonight that's entitled Rising Above Rejection. Rising Above Rejection. Amen. Let me encourage everyone listening tonight. Amen. That uh, to never allow anyone else's opinion of you stunt your potential. Amen. Be all that God intended for you to be. Amen. Nobody else has your gift, your calling. You know what you are. So, amen. Don't let anybody else convince you that you're not what God's intended for you to be. So, uh, usually someone else's opinion comes from their own experiences. You know, when I give you my opinion, I usually give you um, my opinion from experiences I've had in my own life. So, that's the way we are. Uh, we can't uh, get, uh, tell about uh, we we, uh, we draw our conclusions for, from our own experiences and our own limitations, our own failures, our own letdowns in life. So, uh, so don't allow anyone else's opinion uh, impose on you. Amen. Don't let their limitations limitate you. Amen. Uh, you do you. I said, you do you. You be you. Amen. You might possess gifts and callings, talents that uh, are not in somebody else. And whoever you're consulting in may not have the gift that you've gotten. So, uh, you know, their opinions may not amount. It, it shouldn't matter anyway. Somebody help me preach. I read about a man at one time who had lost his business. He lost his savings. He lost his home. He lost his wife. Only thing left that he had was his son. And both of them were having to live on the streets. The man and his son, uh, what they did for recreation together, they would play basketball. And man, the dad told his son one day, he said, I don't want you out playing too late. I don't want you, uh, in other words, don't want you out here thinking that uh, you're going to mount anything with a basketball. Amen, he said, because he, he, you won't be anything but average because that's all I ever was, was average. Amen, this is a dad talking to his son, and the son is usually as, as good as his father. That's what his daddy was telling him. Amen, he said, you've got my genes in you, so uh, uh, there's no use in you wasting time thinking that you'll ever be anything uh, good in, at basketball. Well, uh, the man uh, writing the book that I was reading from, he said, you could see that it pulled all the wind out of that young man's sails when his daddy told him that. I'm going to give you some good advice. Don't even let your parents tell you what you can't be. Just because they never done it don't mean you can't do it. That's good preaching right there. Somebody give the Lord praise. Amen. Just be who you are. The boy, boy, uh, threw the basketball down and, and walked away feeling dejected. See, this daddy had injected his own limitations into his son's mind and discouraged him. Let me tell you something. I, I've always told my kids, you can be what you want to be. Amen. I want to encourage you tonight, not let even your parents uh, tell you what you can't do. You might have a calling in you, a, a gift in you that your dad and mama had never possessed. So you be you. Somebody say, be you. When the dad saw that what he had said to his son, how it impacted him, it, it really hurt the boy. Hey, man, he, he finally got to feeling bad about it and went to his son, got down on both knees and apologized to his son. And he told his son, he said, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't be something great. Son, not even me. That was a wise father to go back to his son and say, uh, don't let nobody ever tell you that you can't be something great, not even me. Amen. Don't ever let anyone kill your potential. Don't let anybody kill your dream, your talent, your gifting, your desires, your vision, your destiny, because God puts something different in everybody else. Come on, somebody, aren't you glad of that tonight? Some people think that uh, they're protecting you when they're, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of time they think they're helping you, but a lot of time they're just he they're hurting you by uh, telling you what you can't do. 
Just because someone uh, didn't go any higher than they went is no sign you can't go no higher. I remember years ago when I started uh, preaching uh, prosperity and stuff, a lot of people started saying things like David's trying to get beyond his raisins. And I want to say amen to that. Uh, everybody ought to want to climb a little higher. Amen. You ought to want your kids to go higher than you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Never allow anyone to convince you that that uh, the dream that God gave you is unreachable. Unreach if God put it in there, it, it's achievable. You can do it or God wouldn't have called you to do it. I'm glad that the Wright brothers, the inventors of the airplane, didn't listen to the mockers and scoffers and give up on the airplane, aren't you? Amen. Nobody else in town had that desire. Nobody else had that dream. Nobody else had that vision. But the Wright, Wright brothers had it, and they pursued it, and they achieved it. Thank God for that. I'm glad that Henry Ford didn't listen to those who laughed at the idea that there could be a, a, a horseless coach, something uh, that would run off of a motor. Amen. That's as far as they could see. You know, uh, they thought they were doing good. Uh, they wouldn't hire cotton with a horse pulling them around. But, honey, let me tell you uh, a guy come around that had a vision that you wouldn't have to have a horse. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Somebody say amen. Thank God. I'm glad that Walt Disney didn't give up on the dream world that he had in his heart when the banks turned him down. 299 times he heard no, 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 no. Amen. I believe after the first 100, I'd have probably got real discouraged. But on the 300th time, Walt Disney got his first yes. How many's glad that... Walt Disney, if you've ever been to Disney World, you know what I'm talking about. Amen, it is a dream world. He wouldn't let his dream go because the mockers and the scoffers. I'm glad that Thomas Edison didn't listen to the doubters who made fun of his idea that there could ever be a light outside of a lamp. Amen. Uh, light from an oil lamp is what, as far as people had got to and nobody else could imagine farther than ever having a, a, a light without oil lamp. But Edison had an idea. Amen. Those people were as far as they could go with it. But, but Edison, he wanted to invent something that you wouldn't have to use oil and Amen, light every morning, and he invented that light bulb. Let me tell you, the desire to keep probing was working in him. He kept digging until he invented the light bulb. Thank God for people who keeps probing until they have a breakthrough. Break new grounds. Thank God for the inventor of the telephone. At one time, telegraph was a great invention. Amen. They thought they were doing real good because they had a telegraph that they could use uh, to contact other cities and towns. But, amen, there was a man come around that decided we can have a telephone where we can sit in the living room and talk to somebody uh, and hear and talk to each other. And he kept pursuing it. And thank God today we have a telephone. Today we've got a telephone. Today we've got computers. I was in India, and a preacher that I was with brought his iPad, and I was sitting in India in my bedroom, and, and I could see Lisa on the iPad, and she could see me at the house all the way in India. Now, let me tell you, I'm glad people keep kept on dreaming. You might possess something in you tonight that your boss man don't possess. Amen. Somebody that'll, amen, something that'll take you to the next level. Amen. Keep believing. Everybody say, keep believing. Amen. The airplane was the right, brothers. It was in their heart. The light bulb was in Thomas Edison, not in another heart. Walt uh, our Disney World was in Walt Disney's heart, not in somebody else's heart. The Model T was in Henry Ford's heart, not in somebody else's heart. Let me tell you, you can't look at, mm, think about that. I'll guarantee you there's something in Tim, something in um, Charlene, something in Lisa, Isaac, Louise, Connie, Robert that ain't in me. 
There's something in me that's probably not in you. I'll, we all have talents. We all have gifts. You can do so. I guarantee you I can outplay horseshoes than some of you. <laughs> Amen. Some of you, maybe not. But I'm telling you, some people can do things. Come on, somebody. Somebody could probably sew better than I can sew. I can't sew a lick. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. You've got a gift. You've got a ca uh, calling. You, Amen. Just like it's cable, cable guys. I, I, I don't know a lick about that stuff. Don't want to know a thing about it. Amen. They're good at it. Amen. They know what they're doing. I guess half of, most of them do. But let me tell you, we've all got gifts and calling. Hey, hey, we can't just do anybody else's job. Any of y'all out there want to preach tonight? Anybody want pastor? I'd like to trade this week of pastoring with you. I would. I'd like to trade this week of pastoring with some of you. So y'all don't know everything that a pastor has to go with, go through. I'd rather be working 40 hours, 50 hours a week than some of the weeks I've had trying to pastor people. It's hard cleaning up sheep manure all the time. It's hard keeping a staff long enough to get back in line now. Hear me preach in this house. Amen. Uh, some people think, well, the glorious be a pastor. Amen. Uh, at the pastoring is more than getting behind this pulpit. You wouldn't want it after about two days. Come on, somebody. And I probably wouldn't want your job after two days. I'm graced for this. You're graced for your job. Whatever, you, come on, somebody. And I, I want to give you some good advice tonight. Don't try to get over in somebody else's area. Don't get in somebody else's lane. Don't, don't try to be something that you're not. If you ain't called to preach, you better leave it alone. You'll end up in a funeral home somewhere. I'm telling you right now, you don't mess with that stuff. I've been praying about some people this week that's playing with this thing. God, don't, hey, this is something you don't want to play with. Somebody say, this is something you don't want to get in if you ain't called because the devil, <laughs> you'll be no match for him without God. Somebody, you'll just make a big embarrassment of, of what's going to happen down the road when, when God proves that you ain't called. Somebody hit me preach. I'll tell you one of the most embarrassing things. I just had this thought. Most embarrassing thing in the world could have been for seven boys have to run home naked. Seven sons of Siva. Devil beat the tar at them, stripped them of their clothes, had to go home naked. That would be embarrassing. Say, so, you know, you better leave this thing alone if you ain't called to preach. Come on, somebody. You get out of your calling. Hey, man, I'm... I'm called to do this. That's why after nearly 40 years, I'm still here. But if I wasn't called, I wouldn't have lasted the first week. Somebody say, God will grace you. Say, what's in me ain't in you, and what's in you ain't in me. Amen. Hey, some people does jobs. I, you couldn't, I wouldn't have it. I went to my uncle's, spent a night with the one time, worst mistake I ever made in my life. He lived on a dairy farm. About 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, my uncle run me and my cousins out of bed. It's time to milk the cows. What do you mean? It ain't 4 o'clock in the morning. Milk the cows. Get out there. We got out of bed and had to go milk the cows, go do a uh, solage pit and throw it. We didn't have no tractor to do it. We had to throw it with a shovel. Then we got the good part, got to go to the barn and clean up the cow manure. I thought if I ever get out of here, I ain't coming back. <laughs> See, they were gifted. My uncle loved that. He loved that. He loved doing that work. But you couldn't get me to do it? I had. Give me a pastor and job and a microphone. I'll be all right. See, uh, let me say this. You can't look at a person and tell what's living inside their heart. I've often said this, you can't judge a book by its cover. Amen. You can't judge what's in a box by looking at the box. 
In ancient time, they would wrap the finest gold and silver in burlap sacks. Burlap didn't look too good, but what was on the inside? Hit me preach. Amen. On Americans Got Talent. Y'all ever watch that? I, uh, me and Lisa likes that. And, uh, anyway, we try to watch it. And uh, on Americans Talent, I've seen some, some big surprises. And, and you, people come out there on stage and uh, start showing what they can do and what they've got inside of them. I mean, stars were born overnight. Opera singers that had never exposed it to the world was in a, in a shower, in a closet, singing it to themselves and then come out on stage and, my God, make it, make it big overnight. So you can't tell what's in the person beside of you. There's greatness in every one of you. You just need to find what's great in you and use it for the glory of God. Amen. Those people on American's Talents for years were unknown but they had a gift in them, amen, that was exposed overnight. You may have uh, your doubters. You may have your mockers. You may have your naysayers. See, David, amen, he had his doubting dad. Well, that's hard if you've got a doubting dad. Hit me preach. Amen, and he had jealous brothers, and they lived with him. I mean, they lived with the king and didn't know it. All they saw was just a little shepherd boy, but God had put a king inside that young. Somebody, whoo, you better be careful who you're living with. My God, help me preach. You don't know who's, who, amen, you're being raised with. My God, they might be the next ambassador, might be the next president, might be the next Billy Graham. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen, somebody ought to be shouting right now. Somebody ought to be praising God right now. Amen, that God placed greatness in you. God gave you a talent, the know-how, and the gift that's living inside of you. I tell you, I believe everybody ought to discover what God placed in them that's special. You know, we, all of us have got different handprints. Hello? God has uh, placed different talents in all of us. We should try to discover it. Amen. Praise God. We're put here to find it and use it for the glory of God. I believe David thought, <laughs> I believe that David thought that they'd think that I'm just, uh, you know, uh, I believe that David thought that they, that and thought that I'm just a average man. Amen. That uh, I think that I'm just mediocre. Amen. Uh, David knew that they was thinking that uh, that he was just a little shepherd boy, but God had planted a seed of greatness in him. And I believe I believe that David thought like this. Now I was telling how. I, I might have mixed up a little bit. But uh, anyway, what I was trying to get at, David's family may not have thought much about him, but David knew. Somebody say, I know that I know. Does anybody feel there's more to you than people say, more to you than meets the eye? Well, David knew that. David knew that there were seeds of greatness living inside of him. Amen. He knew that uh, they couldn't see what was on the inside that he was anointed and had a purpose. Amen. And I believe that when David went out there that day with the, what uh, Jensen Franklin called a pizza and it, <laughs> uh, cheese, you know, took cheese and bread to his brother, he said, that's a pizza. So he took a pizza out there to the brothers. Amen. And uh, when he gets out there, they couldn't see it, but David felt his potential. David felt his greatness. David felt an anointing coming on him. And, and when his brothers got on to him about him being out there, amen, and he ought to be home with those few sheep, he said, there's a reason for me to be here. David knew why he was there. David was equipped. 
He was armed. He was ready. By the outward appearance, it may not look like uh, David was the part. On the outside, amen, it may have looked like he wasn't equipped. It might have looked like he was unarmed. Amen, I don't, uh, you know, David didn't have any natural armor. Amen, he, he didn't look armed. He looked unarmed, but he was well equipped. He was well ready because he had God's calling in him. David run out to face a giant with all the equipment he needed. Can you imagine what people thought when they looked out there and saw a nine-foot giant with a spear and a sword and all that armor that he had on and had an armor bearer that was probably bigger than David? Can you imagine their thoughts? They thought David's boat was sunk. Let me tell you, David was well-equipped. He was prepared for the battle. Amen. People couldn't see it. But David was prepared. He had faith in God. He had faith in his covenant rights. Amen. They, uh, they couldn't see David's faith and covenant rights in David's God. David had the Lord with him. I'm going to tell you, if the Lord's with you, thank God. The Bible said, if God be for you, who can be against you? If you'd been out, <laughs> if you'd have been out there that day and saw David and Goliath when they met, if you were looking at David and his little slingshot and you'd have looked at the giant and all of his stuff, I mean, David was small, but Goliath was big. David carried a slingshot, but uh, Goliath carried a sword and a big spear and a, a big shield and had a big mouth to match it. He could talk it up. Don't you be real with me? I was thinking... Uh, Let's be real tonight. And uh, if you'd have stood out there and you'd have saw David and the giant standing one on one side, one on the other side, looking at each other, uh, which one would you have picked to have win? Which one would you have thought would win? Boy, I thought about it today. If Vegas was cashing in on this, they'd have lost big that day. Amen. Because all the odds were against David. Amen. If it would have been, it would have been a hundred to one. Nobody had voted for David. Not even David's daddy. Nobody, the king or nobody, thought David would win. If David would have calculated it, if David would have sat around and figured it out, looking at the odds, he might have fell into fear. But you know what the Bible says? Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people would look at something like that and they'd run and hide. But David, instead of running and hiding from it, the Bible says he run toward it. He didn't stand around and measure and compare. He took off after it with his faith. It wasn't long until Goliath and everybody else that was watching Amen. Saw that it didn't take but one little smooth stone to bring a giant down. David was equipped with God. Amen. Let me tell you something. Your, your gift may seem small, but I'll tell you it's great with, when God puts his hand on it. It didn't take a cannonball. All it took was a pebble. It didn't take a cannonball. All it took was a little smooth stones. Let me tell you something. About nearly 40 years ago, most people looked at me, looked at my resume, looked at my education, looked at my upbringing, and people said he's not ready for that. But I didn't let those naysayers stop what God had called me to be, do, what he wanted me to be. Boy, they're surprised and probably still surprised that this ministry lived and it's still alive today after 40 years. They're probably surprised that we're reaching the world for Jesus Christ. Somebody praise God tonight. Don't let people, the naysayers, those that says you'll never be able to do anything, have a say-so in your heart. You believe God, step out and do what God's called you to do. Those that said it would, wouldn't last, amen, they were wrong. 
Some thought we'd starve to death when we quit work. Some thought we'd never rise above that little wore out trailer we were living in. Amen. Some thought that our church, I got some uh, reports. You know, people always see to it that you get a bad report. When, Amen. If preachers talk about you, they'll, they'll see that it comes back to you. And I, there's preachers that uh, uh, wish they had their phone numbers. I'd call them, tell them not to worry about me no more. Because they're so worried telling everybody that I'd put the church in so much debt that the church would never survive it. That they would go under. I, I, amen. I'd like to have some of their phone numbers. And I hope they're watching my internet tonight so I can say, brother, quit worrying about me because we come out of debt. <laughs> we're, we're not, we didn't starve to death in those 40 years. We still eating good, eating better today than I've ever ate. Hey, man, we still live in that little trailer. We live in our own home. Paid off. I'm not bragging. I'm bragging on what the Lord. When God puts something in you, don't let the naysayers talk you out of it. Their opinions don't mean a rip to you or me. Somebody say amen. Just be what God wants you to be. Do all that God wants you to do. Nobody can do you for you. Some of you are sitting in here right now that God prophesied you'd be a millionaire. Amen. And there'll be 50 members of your family to tell you you won't. Well, let me tell you something. If you'll believe for yourself, I don't, amen, I just believed it for myself. Amen. I just believe God would make me rich and he has. Amen. I just believe God would bring me out of that debt and he has. And a lot of people don't understand that, how little hillbilly could have that and do that. Let me tell you something. I believe God. Amen. I, your opinion don't matter. Their opinion of you don't matter. Somebody say, does anybody feel that you, there's more to you? Come on. Does anybody in here feel that God's put a calling in you to rise up? Come on, have more than you've ever had before. Do more for the kingdom of God than you've ever done before. Can I hear a witness of that right now? Somebody lift up your voice and give the Lord praise. Somebody praise him. 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 Thank God. 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 Somebody say the bank didn't make me rich. Somebody say my friend don't make me rich. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise in this house. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. Sure wasn't the bank ma will make you rich. I, I got uh, a statement the other day. It's one of our accounts. Just one of them was 330 some thousand dollars uh, just in that one account. And it didn't draw. It didn't draw but uh, 2 or 3% interest. I thought, boy, if the banks was what's blessed me, I'd be hurting tonight. Come on, somebody. Let, let, let me tell you something. Amen. It's the Lord. I said, it's the Lord. I said, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Don't lean on interest. Don't lean on the bank. You lean on Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord praise. Somebody give God praise. Let me tell you something. Lift up your hand. Don't be a be like Jesse Duplantis. Be proud that God's put it in you. Be glad that there's an anointing on you going to make you rich. Somebody praise him. Somebody. Now, some say, yeah, hey, I preach. I got a little man. Let me tell you, that's just one of the little counts. That's just one of them. I ain't telling you about the others. I'm being honest with you tonight. I'm just, I'm being honest with you tonight. I'm being honest with you. How many like to have an account that's got 350,000, 60,000, 500,000? Come on. How many like to be a millionaire? If you won't play with it, God won't play with you. Somebody say amen. Somebody. How many like to have a millionaire mentality anointing on you? Would you raise your hand? Raise hands right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody in here right now needs to stand on your feet and begin to give God praise. Within three years from now, some of you are going to be living higher in the cotton than ever before. Don't let the devil talk you out of it now. Some, uh, some of y'all right now are going to move up to new houses. Somebody praise him. Some of y'all going to pray your houses off. Hallelujah. Somebody. Somebody say something tonight. 
Somebody say something tonight. On, in the Jewish calendar, Paula White brought this out, and Brother Rod Parsley been preaching some on it. The Jewish calendar this year, 2020, in the Jewish calendar, it's different numbers, and, it, and uh, it, it's got, uh, uh, and, but the meaning of it for, for 2020, on the Jewish calendar, it's not 2020. Uh, I forget what year it is, but it's a different year because our calendars are different. But on, in the Jewish calendar, it means the year of speaking the word. You know, I, I, when, I, when I heard that, I about come out of my skin because God been telling me to tell those people, decree the word. Somebody decree the word. Somebody lift your hand. Somebody, somebody, somebody praise him right now. Decree. This is the year to decree, to speak it, and God will bring it to pass. My God, I feel that. Somebody praise him. Somebody shout, I'm, come on. God's got something buried inside of you. Somebody praise him. How many wants this anointing tonight? Raise both hands. Raise your hands this way. Father, I release it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I'm not saying this stuff to brag and boast, but God, how are they going to know unless I get up and tell people? And, and lo, santa. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, let no man say, let, let no man say he hath made me rich. Somebody lift up both hands and pray. How, do you want this or not? My, hey, man, God, God ain't going to force it on nobody because these people in here that's got both hands up and got the faith high as they can get it, and they're going to believe God. And, and I'm telling you, within three years, some of them's going to see miracles. Somebody praise God. Somebody, somebody say, I'm coming to the place in life, my life to where I'll never have to go in debt, where I'll be the lender, and I'll not be the bar. Somebody say it right now, I'm going to be the one that's going to go buy places. Somebody say amen. I see, I see people doing it right now in Jesus' name, in the Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord, I believed you when nobody else would believe you. I believed you, Lord, when others were scoffing and mocking and saying it ain't working. Lord, well, I've proved it worked. Thank God in Jesus' name. Lord, in another account, just the other day, they, they seen it. I had one of the littler accounts, $100,000 uh, uh, that uh, that Lord was, wasn't was drawing, but uh, six, what, three, four, five percent. I thought, my God, I would have drawn my money out of all them crazy banks because they're not what's making me rich in the first place. Somebody lift your hand and say, the Lord's making me rich. So, some, Oh, some of those CDs, Lord, they ain't drawn but 7%, 6 7%. Lord, but I'm, I'm into anointing tonight that God said would draw me 100 per fold. That men would give them. <laughs> hey, the blessings of Abraham's on you right now. Receive it, receive it. Somebody say, I receive it right now. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. Somebody praise him. Somebody, ha, ta, 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 ta. Somebody praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Send him up some real praise. It'll draw the attention of God. Somebody lift up your hand and praise him right now. Hallelujah. I'm often, I'm often uh, uh, leave the, these bills and I think people think he's up there trying to brag and boast. I'm not. If I am, it's on the Holy Spirit. It's on the blessing that maketh rich with no sorrow with it. Somebody lift your hand and praise him. I believe somebody would run, run around this room for me tonight and grab a hold of that anointing that I'm preaching about. Anybody bold enough to run around here for me one time? Just, hey man, just uh, one or two or three. Hey man, you want this anointing? Hey man, praise God. When you're broke as a convict, you might want it. Hey man, praise God. Hey man, anybody else believe God tonight? I don't feel led, honey. I'll tell you, prophet got up and told me that. I'd, I'd, amen. Matter of fact, I believe I'm going to take me around tonight because I, I want the blessing. I want the anointing. 